Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to talk about prostate cancer. This is something which I know is not so common in India, but in, in Northern Europe where I come from, this is the major cancer killer among men. So in Sweden, this is the most common cause of, of, of uh, cancer-related death. Uh, and, and a huge healthcare problem. Uh, and also, it is the operation that actually introduced the robotics in the world. So I think that this is the operation which has been probably studied the most, comparing open and robotic uh, procedure. So is robotic surgery superior to open? Well, it's a, it's a complicated question, fortunately, and it's not so easy. Uh, many surgeons that have tried robot would say that robot is better just because it feels nice, but is it really better? So the, the difference is that it's minimally invasive, and everything which is true about minimally invasive surgery is going to be true about the same true with the robot. So you know basically that in minimally invasive surgery you have less bleeding, less post-operative pain, shorter hospital stay, quicker return to daily activity. Better surgical outcome is much more uh, in question here, and there are some other minor benefits also for minimally invasive surgery. So if you look at the perioperative outcomes for, for prostatectomy, what is really known about this? Uh, I was involved in a, in a major meta-analysis looking at uh, into studies with more than 100,000 patients uh, together with Ash Tewari in, in New York. And looking at the perioperative outcomes, we could show clearly in this that uh, if you look at robotic series, the blood loss is much less than open. Uh, blood transfusion rate is much less. Uh, length of stay was less in, it's very different in the United States and in many of the other countries. But if you look at it, it's shorter for robots than for, for open procedures. Uh, and also the intraoperative and perioperative complications were less in this study. So this is studies, several hundred studies with more than 100,000 patients. Look. Uh, and, but if you look into the literature, the results are quite different if you look at the uh, perioperative complications. So you might find uh, compli studies showing that there is a benefit for robot, but you also find quite a lot of studies showing that there is not a big difference between the perioperative complications for open and robotic. Uh, so a couple of years ago, there was a Pasadena consensus panel uh, where uh, open and robotic surgeon get, got together and tried to decide actually what is known in the literature. And there, what they found was that blood loss and transfusion rate were significantly lower in the robotic series, but uh, other complications were actually similar between the different uh, surgical approaches. So uh, in Sweden we have the largest prospective study looking into this problem. So th this is a series of 4,000 patients. You can almost look at this as a randomized study because the randomization is depending on where the patient is born. Because in Sweden it's or where you live rather than being born. So if you live in a certain area, you belong to a certain hospital, which means that you will be randomized where you live, basically. So in a certain area you will be having an open operation, in another area you will have a, a robotic operation. And this is 14 different centers in Sweden with 4,000 patients. Most of the patients in this series are robotic. In Sweden right now, I would say 85% of the patients that have a prostatectomy will have a robotic prostatectomy. And what was found in this was that uh, there was clearly reduced blood loss and transfusion rate in robotic. And also, there was a longer overtime in the robotic. So the, the time the patient spent in the op operating room was longer in the robotic series shorter length of stay for robotic, and reduced reoperations. So they have fewer number of reoperations uh, at the time of the primary surgery. So I think that, I mean, there is uh, clear evidence in the literature that the blood loss, transfusion rate, length of stay, all favors robotic surgery from open. This is also in, in, uh, in agreement with what's known about minimal invasive surgery. Complications seem to be much more similar. It's difficult because it depends on how, which study you, you read, basically. Maybe it's a favor, a little bit favoring towards robotics, but not this serious, not a big difference. Uh, so looking at the oncological outcome, because this is, of course, an oncological operation, we look at this as a, as a, 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 as a surgery for cancer. But you should also remain or remember when you think about this, in prostate cancer surgery, 
most of the patients will not die from prostate cancer even if you don't operate them. So only one fourth of the patient will actually die from prostate cancer. So you can, I mean, if you just go in and take out the prostate and everything around the prostate, you will cure almost all your patients, but you will have a lot of side effects. And most of the operations are done in vain. So you have to be careful. So, so the oncological outcome then, here is the positive margin rate. The, the, the problem is that up until now, we have almost no data on the hard endpoint, which is death in prostate cancer. We have only endpoints in positive margin rate, which is not a really good endpoint because most of the patients that have a positive margin will not have a biochemical recurrence. And only one or maybe two studies have been able to link a positive margin with the risk of dying from prostate cancer. So that's the problem. The other problem is you look into biochemical recurrence, which is more relevant, of course. But also there, most patients with a biochemical recurrence will not die from prostate cancer. They will die from something else. So looking into this, then there is a similar positive margin rate, maybe slightly favoring robotic. If you look at this, this is from the Pasadena consensus. You see overall there was the same positive margin rate in the meta-analysis that I was involved looking into, we found a slightly difference overall, but mostly in the T2, and it was, you know, borderline significant difference. Looking at the biochemical recurrence rate, it looks pretty much the same as an open surgery. So if you follow, this is from Karolinska series, following patients up to 10 years, and the, the biochemical recurrence rate is almost exactly as you would have in a center where you do open prostatectomy. You will have the same, uh, uh, difference between depending on the stage of the patients and also depending on the Gleason. So this is pretty much similar to open. What is interesting is that if you have a small positive margin, less than three millimeter, we could not find a, a, an effect. We could not find a significant effect on the risk of biochemical recurrence. If you have a large positive margin, you will have a significant effect, but the smaller margins doesn't seem to be very important for the risk of a biochemical recurrence. In, this, in the, this LAPRO study from Sweden with 4,000 patients, the positive margin rates were basically the same in open robot. Uh, so then we come to the functional outcomes. And of course, in prostate cancer, it's continence and potency, which is most important. Here's the Pasadena consensus panel again, and this tend to favor robotic over open. So in their conclusion, they actually say that there is a favorable outcome for continence in robotic surgery compared to open. Uh, looking at the Swedish LAPRO study, this is not confirmed. We are basically the same. So this is the no pad. So around 20% will have a pad for security reasons or for some reason. If you have more than one pad, which is more in a really proper incontinent patient, you will see that they are very similar in the two groups. So there is no difference in our series. Uh, the other f important outcome is, of course, uh, uh, potency. And here there is a difference. And you see that the, the difference is in favor of robotic surgery. So this is from the Pasadena consensus. Uh, and this is the first time actually they conclude that there is a difference. And this is what everybody has been saying when we started robotic surgery, that there will be a difference in potency because the, you are able to do a much better dissection so select the surgical plane of your resection, which should translate into better potency. But it has been very difficult to show that in any studies. Interestingly, this is from this, the Swedish uh, LAPRO study. And here, when we divide this, there is a significant, also the Swedish LAPRO study shows better results for potency. But it's not a really huge difference. It's like a 5 to 10% difference. But the interesting thing here is that when you divide into low-risk prostate cancer and high-risk prostate cancer. You see that this is the robotic, you see that there is clearly better, higher chance of potency. This is the number of men that are potent every time with perfect, they will say that they have basically the same potency as before surgery. Here is the one that have more than, they are successful more than 50% of attempt. Normally, in most series, you would have the cutoff here somewhere and say, these are the potent ones. There are some that are potent, but they are not potent every time, so they are less. So this is the, the cumulative data. But if you compare them for the high risk, you can see that 17% of patients in the high risk group have perfect potency after open surgery, almost the same as in the low risk patients. 
So there is not such a big difference in potency between high risk and low risk in open, but there is a huge difference in the robotic group, and how come? So when we looked into this, we looked into the correlation. Every surgeon in this area, so all for the all 4,000 patients, the surgeon has to say whether he has done a maximal nerve sparing, which this is the bilateral intrafascial, so the closest or the best type of nerve sparing you can do compared to no nerve sparing. And you can see that in the rope, this is results at three months. So you can see that in the robot group, you have a correlation. So the better nerve sparing, the higher chance of a potent patient. If you compare to open surgery, there is almost no correlation. There is absolutely, I mean, almost like a flat line here, so that uh, the degree of nerve sparing doesn't correlate to the outcome in potency. And this is seen also after 12 months. I mean, there are more potent patients, of course, here. But uh, still, it's almost like a flat line in this open series. And this is interesting because this is showing in the low-risk patients. You see that there is a huge difference here for a robot in favor of the robot in the low-risk patients. But looking into the high-risk patients, you see that uh, the, the outcome in the open group is actually better than the outcome in the... Um, the robotic group. And how come this is, of course, due to the fact that they have difficulty knowing exactly the plane they are doing. When they uh, uh, decide or try to get into a certain surgical plane, they actually don't find that plane. And this is the interesting thing is that when you look into this, I told you that the positive margin rates were similar between open and robot in this series. But when you look into the, if you stratify it for risk, the positive margin rate is much higher for the open group in the high-risk patients. And it's, it's different, and so that it's higher for the robot group for the low-risk. So it basically means that robotic surgeons in the low-risk patients, they go very close to the prostate. They have a risk of a positive margin, uh, but they have good erectile function. Lower, or the, the open surgeons, they tend to go too close to the prostate in high-risk patients. So they have their positive margin rate in the, in the open group. And the interesting thing is that biochemical recurrence rate is different. So if you look overall, it's slightly higher in the open group. But this is dramatic difference in the high risk group. So the, biochem the biochemical recurrence, this is a paper coming out soon. But the, the biochemical recurrence rate is much higher for open patients in the high risk group. And of course, this is not good for the oncological outcome. But if you look just overall positive margin rate, then you don't see the difference. So you have to stratify for risk group until you see this difference. So if you look at the outcomes that have been published from this Swedish LAPRO study so far, it's the reduced blood loss uh, in, in robotic. Uh, there is less need, so there is less complications. I mean, there is a paper showing that for the, op for the open patients, they tend to see contact with healthcare more significantly more often than the robotic group after this type of surgery. There is also a paper showing that there is a reduced thromboembolic complication rate in robotic compared to open, so that when you do a lymph node dissection in your robotic patient, you have less risk of a thromboembolic, both pulmonary embolism and thrombosis, probably because it's intra-abdominal operation, so you actually open, if you have a lymphatic leakage after surgery, it will go into the abdomen, whereas in open surgery, you do your extra peritoneal dissection, and if you have a lymph leakage, you will have a risk of having a compression of the, the veins, and you have a higher rate of thromboembolic complications. And the erectile function was actually better in, in the, the robotic group, but it's the similar uh, continents. So another important issue is, of course, uh, how quick you can recover, uh, re uh, return to work. And this is a uh, meta, or not a meta, it's a multi-institutional analysis between Denmark and Sweden. And we looked at open and robot. And actually, 50% of the patients were back to work in the open group after 49 days. And in the robotic group, 50% were back to work after 11 days. So quite a dramatic difference in the time to come back to work. 
Uh, if you look at, into the whole Swedish registry, which was done recently in another study, they showed 35 versus 48 days, so they had in that series 13 days difference in favor for the robot. Uh, cost issue, so this is of course related to the cost issue, because the cost issue here uh, probably is very different from Europe and India, cost reasons, I guess. The healthcare system is different, and you have to think about the cost of the investment, there is a service fee, and there is an instrument cost. So all of this will sort of show you that robot is more expensive than open, of course. Uh, however, you have shorter hospital stay, you have decreased blood transfusion rate, uh, you have decreased erectile dysfunction, uh, and there seem to be maybe a decrease in some of the complications, reoperations and so far, and, and there is a first return to normal activity. So for the hospital, they would have to bear the cost of this. But for the society, there might actually be some gains of using the robots. So there is a diff So it's not so easy to see which is more expensive and, and so on. It's easy for the hospital. And of course, the other issue is the, the, the future of surgery. So where are we going with surgery? And also, this might be different in different uh, systems. But I think one of the main advantages with robotic surgery is the, how you can train robotic surgeon and how the educational system can be because you have the ability to see the operation exactly as this, in the same way as the surgeon. So you can s transmit it and you can be 10,000 doctors looking at exactly the same operation. This is very difficult to do with open surgery. It's almost impossible even if you have cameras and so on. There. So one possibility is to treatment with um, or, or um, education yeah, by using this is Jim Porter doing telementoring. So he's well, in well, one position okay. and it's the surgeon is in another position who is doing the that's operation and you can actually look at the screen. We have this in my hospital with a neighboring hospital where we can see all their operations and we can go in on the screen and well, we can actually they can phone us and we can help them out right when they have a problem at surgery and we can draw on the screen and, and now, I think this I is something out, which is very important how we are going to train surgeons and how we are going to have a better outcome, more general outcome over the, the world. So this is one of the things that we have been doing from Karolinska, which is the WRSE, which is a around the world global robotic event where we also include centers from Delhi. So this is live surgery done for 24 hours going around the globe like this. And first time we did it was for 58 countries in that looked at this. So next time is actually in May, 23 to 24. And again, centers from Delhi is going to take part. The next time we had 79 countries. So actually for 24 hours, these operations go around the world and everybody can just log in and, and watch the surgery. And this, I think it's like almost 20 live cases going on there at this time all over the world. So take home message. Perioperative outcomes clearly favor robotic surgery. Oncological outcomes, more difficult to say. I think that the lab room may actually suggest that robot is better than open, but it's not clear. Potency outcomes favor robot. Hospital economy clearly favors open surgery. Healthcare economy is more difficult to say, actually, which is the most beneficial system. Continents, so far, I think that seems to be pretty similar between the two techniques. But I do think that the further development of surgery favors robotic surgery. Thank you.